The New Truth series is about to begin. Tonight, we just finished our first meet and greet with Dr. Lorraine Day. And it was so, it was so nice to get to know everybody, but here's the thing. I had to capture a moment where Dr. Day was sharing about God's love, and I want to share it with you. If you open your chat, you'll be able to read what Victoria wrote. And with, with so, because I want to make sure that I'm mindful of everybody's time today. Dr. Day, I would love for you to share a little bit about your background for people who are new to you and people who have learned to love you because you have changed their life. You have changed my life. I want to say thank you to you and let you have the floor if you want to share anything. All right. Well, I was raised a Christian. I had wonderful Christian parents. And uh, I had a brother who was a wild man. He was not into drugs or alcohol or anything like that. Nobody was at the time I was young. But he was uh, the evil Knievel before evil Knievel came on the scene. And so I was a good little girl because I didn't want to cause my <clears throat> parents problems because my brother was always breaking some bone in his body. And so I did everything that I was asked to do. I went to Christian schools. In fact, I learned a whole lot about revelation when I was growing up because I went to a school where they taught a lot about Re revelation and Daniel. We had Bible uh, in school every single day. And I had that for not only the, all the years of grade school and high school, but in college as well. So I learned a lot about Revelation, but I did not know the Lord. Uh, I thought I was a Christian because I said I believed in God. I believed there was a God. But from my later life, I realized I didn't know the Lord at that time. But when I got to be in my early 20s, I realized that I was being asked to believe in a God and love a God who says, love me and I'll let you live with me forever. But if you don't, I'm going to torture you. And I thought, well, my parents would never do that <laughs> to me. Never. If I was a serial killer, they would hate what I had done, but they would love me still. Uh, so I thought, who is this God? I can't get my mind wrapped around that. So many people think I left the church because I had Christian parents which, who were too tough on me, but not at all. I had wonderful Christian parents who disciplined my brother and me when they thought we needed it, but I knew they would never really hurt us. So I left the church really because my parents were such good parents and I couldn't get my head around a God who was going to punish people for eternity or for even a time by burning. I couldn't get my head around that because there would be no goal in that. When you're burning, they say you have no second chance to turn your life around. So then when I got into medical school, I re realized that that is the definition of a psychopath, somebody who just likes to see somebody suffer. And it's not discipline because discipline is remedial. It turns you back to right doing. This was punitive just to watch people suffer. So when I was in my early 20s, I left the church. I was an agnostic for 35 years. I didn't know whether there was a God or not. And so, I, of course, I didn't study, which I should have, but I just went my own way. And I thought, if God's going to burn us in hell, I'll deal with that later. And so, so for 35 years, I was not in any church, have not been in a church since that time. But I realized that it took 35 years for God to deprogram me from all of the orthodoxy that I learned so my mind could be open to have my allegiance to God and not to my allegiance to a church. So when I developed cancer as a doctor, I already knew, now this may not be acceptable to some of you, but I already knew doctors don't know how to get anybody well from any disease. As I said earlier, that's why I became a trauma surgeon. Because if you're run over by a bus, you're shot or stabbed, you fall out of a window, whatever happens to you, you break a bone, I can put you back together again and you can go lead your life. But with diseases, doctors only give drugs or they cut out your organs or cut off your body parts and that never cures anything because there's no disease on the face of the earth that is... Um, caused by a deficiency of drug medication. Oh, let's see, I developed cancer because I haven't had enough chemotherapy in my life. No, that's not the way it works. 
Uh, diseases don't fall from the sky. They don't just happen. They're not genetic. Cancer is not genetic. I don't care how many doctors tell you that it is. Because in 1900, only 3% of Americans had cancer. Now over 50% do. If cancer were genetic, our great-grandparents would have had to have as much cancer as we do now in order to pass it down to us. We are doing these things to ourselves. I gave myself cancer. I didn't do it on purpose. I did it ignorantly because, again, doctors don't know how to keep themselves well. Doctors develop cancer, Parkinson's, heart disease, and every other disease at the same rate as the general population, and they die of those diseases at the same rate as the general population. So if the doctors don't know how to prevent or reverse their own disease, how in the world do you think they can do it in you? And the first question you have to ask yourself is, how many human bodies has my doctor created? Well, the answer is zero. Well, how many has God created, including yours? Billions. So who knows more about getting you well, God or man, your doctor? So when I developed cancer, I already knew that both chemotherapy and radiation caused cancer. I wasn't going to do that. I already had cancer. And they would destroy my immune system, the one system God has given me to get me well and keep me well. So I wasn't going to do that. And then I knew that I didn't develop breast cancer because I had too many breasts. So cutting one or both of them off was not going to cure me. So after I had my uh, biopsy diagnosis, I said, I'm not going to do it that way. So I investigated all of these non-toxic alternative therapies. In fact, I tried 40 different non-toxic alternative therapies, all the time getting sicker and sicker because none of them work. Some of them used to work 80 years ago. They don't work anymore because everything's changed about life from 80 years ago. In fact, everything's changed from life from last year, hasn't it, in this world now? But everything has changed, so they don't work anymore. People are too stressed. They're eating the, in very bad ways, and so... I had to, I, I tried all of these alternatives and I kept getting sicker and sicker. My tumor kept growing bigger and bigger. And finally I realized these are still not of God. They're of man. They're not God's way. I had found a text in the Bible in Deuteronomy 7, 11 to 15. Now remember, I had two young sons. I didn't want to die, and I especially didn't want to die and leave my children without a mother. So I had the greatest motivation. I studied all the medical literature. There's a whole uh, area of medical literature that we're not taught in our training. And it's all the things about how to get well naturally. In fact, everything I use to get well is available in nature. Because God loves everybody the same. And his plan is available to everybody in the world. Now, three-fourths of the world does not have access to modern medicine. So that can't possibly be God's way. Because he would then be the biggest bigot of all. So everything that I use to get well is created by God. And it's used in the form God made it. Now, if you go to a doctor and you're going to have an operation or chemo or radiation, you have to sign a consent that you could be maimed for life or die and neither you nor your family will sue the doctor. Well, that means they don't have any confidence in their method of treatment. <laughs> but God gives you a 100% guarantee. In Deuteronomy 7, 11, 15, he said, if you follow my laws, and that includes all his natural health laws that are in my materials on my website at drday.com, if you follow my laws, my commandments, all 10 of them, now, when I ask people, you know, well, what, what's the first commandment? Oh, well, well, even Christians, they'll say, well, well, uh, I don't memorize them. Yeah, but you've got to know what they are. If you want to be well, you've got to keep them. So you better know what they are. So you have to keep all of God's commandments. And then you have to keep his decrees. And then he promises, I will keep you free from every disease. Well, then when I say that to people, they'll say, well, you know, I, I trust the Lord and I've been a Christian all my life. And then I say, then why do you have cancer? If you're following all God's laws, commandments, and decrees, then you won't have cancer or else God's a liar. So anyway, I was trying to do as much as I knew how to do 
using all these different alternatives long enough to see if they work. I went to four clinics in Mexico. I tried ozone. I tried 714X, a macrobiotic diet. I tried everything. None of it worked. I kept getting sicker and sicker. I was bedridden for six months. I was sick for two years, getting worse, bedridden for six months. And at one point, I was not expected to live through the night. And my husband said to me, I had collapsed on the floor. I could barely talk. I hadn't been able to eat or drink for a long time. And he said, I'm taking you to the hospital because you're dying. And I knew I was dying. As a trauma surgeon, I've seen a lot of people die because they frequently are brought to us in a situation where we can't even save them. They're just moments from death. So I said, no, I'm not going. Because I knew that doctors would not know how to get me well. Doctors don't know how to get themselves well. I've had many, many friends, doctor friends, die of cancer. So why would I do what they did? You see? So I said, I'm not going because I knew that if, if I went to the doctor, they could put in an IV, they could give me fluid, they could give me nutrition through the IV, and in two hours I would feel like a totally new person, but I knew I would die because I would have turned my back on God and his way. Faith means you believe it and then you'll see it. Most people say, I'll believe it when I see it. God requires the opposite. You've got to step out in faith and you've got to believe that God will do what he said. Now, I didn't just raise my hands to heaven and get well miraculously. It was a long, hard struggle. It took me 18 months to get well by following judiciously 100% all of the things in the plan, and it's a whole lot more than diet, a whole lot more than diet. So uh, by the, I, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was called by the doctor and told my diagnosis on November 1, 1993. By the spring of 97, I was well. I kept getting worse for two years, then 18 months it took me to get well. Since then, I've been totally well and cancer-free. I don't get sick. I don't get diseases. I've never been back to a doctor uh, since my biopsy diagnosis. And uh, so I, people say, well, how do you follow your progress on God's health plan? Well, I talk about that in my book, Getting Started on Getting Well, How You Follow Your Progress. But it's not through a doctor. Because if you're going to a doctor to confirm whether God's health plan will work or not, it won't work because you are putting one foot in one camp and the other foot in the other camp. You've got to put both feet in God's camp and sign on completely and believe that God will do what he has said. So that began my journey. And that was when I, I, I prayed the following prayer the night that I was so sick. And uh, I said to God, I don't even know if you're up there, but if you are, and you know my heart, you know I don't like you. You seem like a pyromaniac to me. You're gonna torch me if I don't love you back. How can I love somebody who's gonna burn me if I don't? And that doesn't make any sense, you see. I said, but I need your help, and you have promised in your word, if I follow your laws, commandments, and decrees, you'll keep me free from every disease, and I am dying. I need your help. And I also added, and if you're not like the churches teach, please show me. Well, immediately when I prayed that prayer, he opened my mind to a conversation I had had with my orthopedic surgeon mentor, Dr. Ted Boville, 25 years before that point, where he had gone to medical school before they had IVs. And he had told me how they kept people, dehydrated people alive before they had IVs. So immediately, that's what I did. And I talk about that on my DVD, Cancer Doesn't Scare Me Anymore. And I kept myself alive for two or three days until I started turning around. I could start eating again because I'd been too sick to eat. If I put anything in my mouth, including uh, even ice chips, it would make me nauseated and I would throw up. So slowly, I started turning around and my tumor started... Uh, uh, detaching from my chest wall. My tumor had been so big that it was attached to my whole chest wall, came up like a big mountain. And then the tumor started detaching from my chest wall, which tells you that it's dying. You see, what, what doctors do, doctors work at the wrong end of every disease. They work at the tumor end, or they work at the symptom end. 
They give you drugs that decrease your symptoms. The drugs don't cure you. They don't ad address the underlying causes of the disease because doctors don't even know what those are. But all the causes of disease are the way we live, think, act, eat, and handle stress. We give the disease to ourselves. And that is the good news because if we gave it to ourselves, then we are the only ones to, that can reverse it by changing the way we live, think, act, eat, and handle stress. So as I did that, I started getting well. And then I realized that, you see, at the time that I developed cancer, I was at the peak of my career in orthopedic surgery. When I became an orthopedic surgeon, many people don't know that women don't go into this field because it's very hard work. You're using high-speed power instruments like a carpenter, you're drilling on bone, and uh, you carry 50 pounds of traction equipment around to set people up in traction. So when I graduated uh, from medical school in 1969 and started my orthopedic residency. I was the only one in a period of 25 years at UC San Francisco, the only woman. And then when I became an orthopedic surgeon, there were 20,000 orthopedic surgeons in the country um, and I was the 12th woman. So I was at the height of my career and yet I was dying. I was dying. And I thought, I need somebody smarter than I am to run my life. Now, there's only one yeah. book God has given us that tells us everything important. It tells us how to, how to live, how to think, how to raise our children, mm -hmm. how to do a good job, how to stay well. It tells us everything about life, and nobody reads it. And some people read it, but they don't study it. And this is just one book. Not only that, just think, what if you were a certified uh, public accountant, you're a CPA, and the best CPA in all of America said to you after you just graduated from college or from CPA, took your exam, he said to you, I'm going to spend every Wednesday with you telling you everything I know. Would you say, oh, well, that's not convenient for me. I, don't, I can't do that. Well, God, God has said to us on his Sabbath, I'm going to spend the whole day with you, telling you everything I know, teaching you about who I am, teaching you about nature, and people don't do it. So I started reading the Bible with the greatest motivation during my illness, which was not to die. And so when God got me well, he opened my mind. I was not healed miraculously. It was a long, hard struggle getting well. But I have been well ever since, and I don't get sick. And I'm 83 years old, and I have the energy of a 30-year-old. And everybody can be this way. Nobody has to be sick. Nobody has to die of cancer. And so I started studying God's word. And God started opening my mind to understand because I had no allegiance to a church. I knew that I would not find my answers for health in a church because the churches are full of people who are sick and dying and taking drug medications and having operations. So they don't know the truth of God because God promises us that if we do it his way, we'll be well. So I started studying the Bible on my own. And that's when I recognized also that that all these denominations never learn anything new about the Bible. They never learn anything new about the Bible because they believe everything that their founders believed. Nothing different. Lutherans are 400 years old. They believe everything that Martin Luther said. Well, you know, if we've got the greatest book that's ever been written by God himself, you'd think we'd learn something new because I learned something new every couple of weeks from the Bible, still, after all of these years. Because as we search for the Lord with all our heart, he opens up our mind more and more to truth. Studying Revelation and studying the rest of the Bible has nothing to do with superior intelligence. It has everything to do with obedience obedience to the way God wants us to live, think, act, eat, and handle stress, and search for him with all our heart. He said, you will seek me, and you will find me, but only when you search for me with all your heart. And when he says you will find me, what he means is you will find out who I really am. Now, we are made in the image of God. 
God says that in, in Genesis. We are made in the image of God. How happy would you be for eternity if even one of your children was not with you? When a parent loses a child, they have a hole in their heart forever. So how could you be happy for eternity? Is God going to give you a lobotomy so you don't know that you had that child? Not at all. So how is God going to wipe away all tears from your eyes? The Bible says that. And then if we are made in the image of God, how can God be happy for eternity if even one of his children is burning in hell or dead forever? Nobody thinks about that. I have a whole a chapter in my newest book, Who Started the Organized Church, on cognitive dissonance. They say God is love, and we're going to study this tomorrow night. God is love. But if you don't love him back, God's going to burn you to death. Wait, wait a second. If a human parent did that, the police would put him on trial and probably put him in prison for the rest of his life. It doesn't make any sense. And this is what the churches teach. So we're going to learn what the Bible says about who God is. The Bible contains everything anybody needs to know. And you see, if, if, if people are atheists, so they say, well, I don't believe in God. Okay, well, that, what's the guide for your life? What is the guide for your life? Is science the guide for your life? Well, science is constantly changing. Every doctor knows that. The way we treated various diseases 30 years ago is very different from the way we treat them now. So science is constantly changing. You cannot put your life uh, uh, on, on scientific facts. That's not the way to run your life. So what is the way to run your life? People talk to me about how to get well from cancer and I tell them about it and they'll say, I'll talk it over with my family. Well, how many human bodies has your fa any member of your family created and how much do they know about the physiology, anatomy and biochemistry of your body? They know nothing. Talk to God about it. Read his word about it and see what he says about it. He's the one that made your body and he knows how to make you well. And with what's coming on the world right now, including America, God is the one who knows everything that's going to happen. He's the one that he has not lost control of his creation. People talk about, oh, you know, well, we have free will. Well, if you know the Bible, then if we have free will, how did God harden Pharaoh's heart? Pharaoh couldn't have had free will if God hardened his heart. The Bible says God sets kings up and takes them down. Well, then how can they have free will? You see, God says, we're the, he's the potter, we're the clay. How much free will does clay have? Who would you rather have running your life, you or God? You see, we need God to run our life. And that's what I realized by my cancer that almost took my life was the best thing that ever happened to me because God got my attention. And I turned to him because even though in my secular life, in medicine, I was at the height of my career, but I was dying. So I realized I wasn't that smart. Everybody needs God to run their life. And that's what we're going to learn because God has told us, he's promised us, I will tell you this beforehand. And in Revelation, he's told us all the things that are going to happen from this time on. So we're going to be learning that. And you will find that God truly is love. The churches give lip service to that, but what they teach about him shows the opposite. But you will find that God truly is love. And if you have a disease of any sort that's serious, God is calling you to come and change your life, to live his way so you can be well and you can live a long and healthy life. And uh, I got years ahead of me, unless, <laughs> unless the New World Order cuts off my head. So <laughs> I threatened to do that a few times. So, so anyway, um, the thing is that we're going to have a wonderful time learning that God truly is the most wonderful God you could ever imagine, which is actually the hidden mystery of the Bible. The Bible talks about the hidden mystery. You can only understand the hidden mystery if you have some of the character of God in your heart. So I look forward to meeting with you tomorrow night and every Monday for the next 12 weeks. And we're going to have a wonderful time finding out that God 
is the, the greatest God we could ever have, the most loving parent. He loves us more than we could possibly even love our children. And he says he will never leave us or forsake us, but we have to seek him and search for him with all of our heart. So welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here and we'll start tomorrow night and have a wonderful time together. Thank you, Dr. Day. Isn't she wonderful? I'm sure all of you can um, agree to this. Everybody's giving you applause. I don't know if you can see it, Dr. Day. It's a silent <laughs> muted applause, yeah. but we're all giving you, oh, look at that. Jonathan came up with a little handprint. Oh, all these creative people. <laughs> is it too late to sign up? It is never too late. Just like God, it's never too late to accept God in your heart. It's always the perfect time. So if you miss the first or the second class or whatever class you missed, just know that they're all recorded. You can watch it at your convenience. And also you can sign up at any time. So check out the link, click it, invite your friends, your family, strangers, let them know that instead of listening to the mainstream media of what's happening in the world, to bring all the noise down and listen to God's word. And I'm so glad Dr. Day is going to be guiding us through this process. Thrilled to invite you. I hope that you will join us because we've been waiting for you. Click now and join us for our 12-week journey. And if you join us for half of it, that's fine too. We'll still be waiting for you. You will complete our group. So we'll see you soon. Bye.